Okay, so in the previous video of this series, in this playlist, we took a look at the arrange window, the console, the browser, the inspector. Uh, we spoke about some similarities and some differences between Logic Pro and Studio One. In this video, I wanted to focus on getting your interface set up and getting your IO labels and everything and being able to save and recall those. Okay, so first and foremost, let's move over to Logic here. I'm gonna close my browser and I'll close my console and let me just zoom out a little bit. Now, with respect to the interface setup, I'm using a quantum system. It's an aggregated system. I'll show you really, really quickly. It is basically running, where are we here? My quantum system. It's basically aggregating a quantum and a quantum 4848, which gives me 32 inputs and outputs over DB25, plus a ton of SPDIF and ADAT. I generally only use the built-in ADDA converters that are on these quantum, so it's a relatively big system. Now, in addition to that, I have lots of gear that's set up to uh, work with my quantum, and they're set up on specific inputs and outputs. So if we hop over to Studio One, I'm gonna open up my console for a second. If we click the Mix tab over here, in the top left, you'll see Audio I.O. Setup. This is the easiest way, I think, to get to your Audio I.O. Setup. You can see that I have a bunch of inputs. They're all named and labeled accordingly. They're even color-coded. I have a bunch of different outputs. And of course, these all show up in my console. If I wanted to choose a very specific input, if I'm tracking or recording, or if I wanted to use a very specific output, if I needed to send to anything or create cue mixes, this is a really awesome way to be able to work. Now in Logic, we have a different area over here. Let me find it. I think it's in the mix section. Okay, so we have IO labels, IO assignments. Okay, let's go to our IO assignments first. This is pretty self-explanatory. If you're working in Logic, you understand what this means. Now let's go to our IO labels. Full disclosure, I don't track in Logic often. I really haven't tracked in Logic in years, but sometimes I will get a Logic session and I will open it up and export things to continue the production in Studio One. But you have the basic input, you have what's provided by the driver, and then you have the ability to create a username, long and short, so that you have some customization in terms of understanding what your inputs and outputs are. Let's talk about how to do this in Studio One. Okay, well, first and foremost, First thing I'm gonna do is I'm just going to select everything and let's just clear out this IO setup because I know there's a ton of different information over here. I'm gonna clear some channels that are in use. Yes, we're just gonna clear this away. So now I have my inputs and my outputs. By default, you will always have a set of main outs and they will always be mapped over here. Okay, so I'm going to click apply and then I'm going to click okay. Now, if we open up our uh, audio preferences and we go to the audio setup and we go to audio device, this is where you're going to choose your interface. Now in my case, I'm choosing a quantum system because that's the setup I'm using, but I actually have a lot of different interfaces that are set up with this system. I've got a Studio 192, I've got, uh, like I said, the two quantums which can run individually on their own or as an aggregated system. Uh, in addition to that, I've got a universal audio which isn't powered on right now, but I've got lots of different setups. Now. The easiest way to do this is if you're in the audio device setup and you choose your system that you're going to use, we can click apply. I can now move to my song setup and now we're in our inputs and outputs. So the easiest way to do this is we can just click add mono to be able to immediately add mono pairs or we could click add stereo and then it's very easy for us to just designate where we want these to be in terms of uh, in, in the matrix of where you want things to sit. And uh, we can do the same for the outputs, same for the inputs. And these are also very easy to go, for example, mic one. Now this is where kind of like with logic, you will always get what is reported from the driver. So this is a device one and I'm getting the uh, mic line instrument input one and two. This is like I said, is coming from the driver. If we take a look down the line over here, this is device two in my aggregate setup, which is my 4848, and this is going to show up. So even if I didn't have anything set up, and I, as long as I had some of these mapped out, like for example, these two over here, let's click apply and okay. The minute I click my inputs and outputs, we will see the input, the, the name that it's been given, but also what's reported by the driver will always be on the right side. Now. If you want to set things up manually and you want to custom name some of your 
inputs and outputs, this is something that I would highly recommend doing. So for example, if I'm in my outputs tab, if I wanted to set up outputs for the remaining line outs I have on this system, and maybe for my headphones as well, I'm just gonna click add stereo, add stereo. They're auto mapping and they're kind of cascading down as you go. So from this case, if I had a very specific set of gear, so for example, let's look at headphone left, right. This is the HP1 and HP2 out of my quantum. In these cases, right over here, I'm gonna go to headphones. I could just call this HP1 and I could double click here. We'll call this HP2 and then I'm going to click apply. And now you can see that this has a custom name that I've given it. It will still say what's reported by the driver, but this is the same as kind of like a custom label. Now I could also give these a very, very bright color if I wanted them to show up. So now I'm gonna click apply and okay. Now if I go to my output section, notice headphone one and headphone two, whoops, I accidentally colored the wrong one, but you get the idea. This is an area where we can adjust our inputs and outputs. We can reorder things if we want to. We can remap them to be in a different order. And the great thing about this is once you have it all done and you're happy with everything, all you have to do is click make default. What that means is that every time you start a new song, it will automatically work with whatever you have set to be the make default setting. Now, in addition to that, if you've gone through and you've set things up accordingly, maybe I have some external preamps that are set up in my system. Maybe this one I don't wanna need, I don't need that at all, I wanna remove it. In the case that I have something set up already, so for example, let's say this is my Solo 610, all right? Maybe this is kind of like a Neve preamp. We'll go Neve 1073. If you have specific hardware preamps that are connected to your system, and again, like I said, we can also give these a really, really bright color. Let's give these both a super bright color. I'm going to click apply and okay. Now, if I click the inputs, this really helps things stand out. So I'm able to choose these properly. Now, the other thing we can do is if we click the inputs tab over here, you will also see all the different inputs and you also see a basic level really cool thing with Studio One too, is you can actually add plugins on your inputs, which is very much like a Universal Audio Apollo type workflow. I tend to do that a lot when I'm working in the box natively using software monitoring. I will actually add plugins directly on my inputs so they get rendered or printed into the audio. Okay, let's go back to our IO setup though for a moment. Let's say you've set something up and you are completely happy with the way that you've set up. Like I said, we have the option to make default and that will make it so that every new song you open will start off with your IO setup. Now, if somebody sends you a song or maybe you've accidentally done something you don't know how to get back, it is really easy for me to reset to default. What that means is that regardless of what IO setup you have loaded from somebody else, or if you've accidentally removed something or you've remapped things and you're not sure what's going on, reset to default. Do you wanna reset your default? I'm gonna click yes. This automatically resets my whole entire IO exactly the way I want. So now I'm going to click apply and I'm going to click okay. I'll just disable my listen bus for now. That's something we'll get into later. But now I have all of my different inputs that are available all of my different gear, all of my different external hardware, any external instruments that are selected. I've color coded things accordingly, and this is the same for my outputs. So these are all the different outputs I have available to choose from. So my inputs, I can see everything. I know that this is coming in, my voiceover now is coming in on track one, and if I wanted to take a look at my outputs, it's the exact same thing. I have all these different outputs and all of these outputs are based on what I've set up over here. I'm gonna click OK, and let's click the Outputs tab for a moment. So we're just looking at a basic setup. So a couple other things I wanna talk about. If you click any Studio One track in the track header, uh, providing your track height is high enough, you have the option to go from channel mode. You can go either mono or stereo. So a stereo track, if you set this to stereo, you can still use a mono input. Now that's really nice because if you're using like a virtual guitar amp or you're using any type of plugin that you wanna monitor through that is an actual stereo plugin, you can feed it a mono source and you can record a mono source on that stereo track. Now while we're on that topic, if we take a look at our inputs and outputs, 
Notice that I have my mono tracks set and then I have my stereo tracks set as well. The main reason for this is because Studio One works in a slightly different way than other DAWs in that, let's say I take a look at my ADL 600, which is a dual channel. So it's either stereo or dual mono to preamp. I have a stereo pass set up, but I also have dual mono. But if I just had the stereo pass set up, I wouldn't be able to choose between the left branch or the right branch of that stereo path. So it's very important that you make sure you set up your mono paths and your stereo paths so that they're available as either mono inputs or stereo inputs while you're doing your recording. Okay, now while we're on this subject, once you've gone through all the work, it can be really beneficial to actually, and especially if you're working with different interfaces, it can be really beneficial to export your settings. Or maybe you were working at another studio and they had different settings and they were using a certain interface and you wanna be able to save and recall these once you set them up. So for that, we have two options. We have export and import. So for this one, if I'm happy with everything exactly as it is, I can choose to export this. You can see I have these different setups that I have that are based on different interfaces that I've used. So I have an Apollo Twin setup, uh, I was doing some work with an artist and she was using uh, Steinberg UR12, so I set up a basic one for that. I have my Quantum plus my 4848. I have a bunch of different setups. So once I'm happy with everything, I can just give this a name and I like to give things a date. And I could say, for example, 2021. And now I am exporting this. I will click save. And now this has been exported. Now. If I started a session or I was working somewhere else and I needed to import an IO setup, if somebody had already created one, they could just send it to me and then I have the ability to import this. So I could just choose whichever one I wanna work. This one, you can see it was created February 12th, 2021. If I wanted to import this IO configuration setup, I can just bring this right into my system. So if I switch over my interface to being an Apollo, then I could just import the proper IO configuration and everything will be set up exactly how I want. So that's setting up your inputs, outputs, uh, creating custom labels, making it default, being a, the ability to reset it to default, being able to export your IO setup for different interfaces or being able to import different IO setups from different interfaces that either you yourself have created or that other people shared with you. In the next video, we are going to talk about recording with Studio One versus Logic Pro. So we will catch you for more in the next video.